everyone, welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. Well, it wouldn't be the fall if I wasn't crocheting myself some kind of pumpkin related project. And this is it this week. <laughs> the truth is I've wanted a little pumpkin hat for myself for the longest time. And I was in the stash and I found this bright orange yarn and it just screamed pumpkin. And I thought, well, this is the week. So today we're gonna show you how to make this hat to fit anybody. It is super fast. It is super simple. You can mix yarn weights. You don't have to worry about stitch count. You don't have to worry about row count. Although if you don't have a measuring tape handy, I do have some stitch counts and row counts that are appropriate for children and adult women and adult men. And of course, I'm going to show you how to make it custom to fit yourself. It's really easy. Don't be frightened. And it's so cute. It even has like a little stem and a little tendril and you can do whatever you want with the brim. You can roll it up in a jaunty way like I have. You can have it rolled up all the way around. You can have it roll all the way down if you want to sort of look like you're in a pumpkin cloche. <laughs> I love this hat. Very, very easy. And it doesn't take very long at all. I think I had this one put together in about, about an hour. <laughs> anyway, let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn. We'll head on over to the craft table and we'll stitch up a little pumpkin hat together. In order to make my pumpkin hat, I've got two different 100% acrylic yarns here. I've got some orange, which is a size five chunky bulky weight yarn, and a green, which is a size four medium weight yarn. This is a very flexible hat pattern, so you can mix your yarn weights, and I recommend getting your hands on some orange yarn that has some chunk or bulk or texture to it, because that will help make the pumpkin part of your hat look more realistic. For a child's hat, you want around 190 yards of orange, for an adult lady, 200 yards. For an adult male or a larger head, around 225 yards of the orange. For the green part, our stem and our little tendril, around 50 yards, regardless of the size of the hat you're making. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle. I recommend a measuring tape for this project. And we're using a 6.5 millimeter or a seven millimeter hook. That's also known as a K or a 10.5 in the US. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We are making a fairly tight fitting hat. So we are all going to chain a foundation chain length. It can be any number of chains. For children, you want your foundation chain length to be around seven inches long, about 22 chains. For women, eight inches long, around 25 chains. And for men or larger heads, around nine inches long, about 28 chains. I recommend you start chaining, grab your measuring tape, and make sure that your foundation chain length measures roughly those measurements, depending on the size of the hat that you're making. I have chained 25, and when I measure my foundation chain length, it comes out to eight inches. I'm making a hat for a lady, but if you're making a hat for a child, you want your foundation chain to measure approximately seven inches for a man or a larger head, approximately nine inches. And that can be any chain count it needs to be. This is not stitch count specific. We are going to skip the first chain from the hook, half double crochet into the next chain. So skip, find the next chain, half double crochet into it, and half double crochet into each chain across. So if you had 25 chains in your foundation chain row like I did, you will have 24 stitches at the end of row one. If you chained 22 for a child, that would be 21 stitches. If you chained say 28 for an adult male or a larger head, that would be 27 stitches. So however many chains you had in your foundation chain row, you will have one less for your stitch count at the end of row one and for every row going forward. At the end of row one, you should have a stitch count that is one less than the foundation chain count that you began with. In my case, I have 24 half double crochet stitches. Going forward, we are going to continue to use the half double crochet stitch, but it's going to be back loops only. So at the end of every row, we chain one. The chain one does not count as a stitch. We turn our work. We are using the back loop. The back loop is always the loop that is furthest away from you. Skip your chain, find the back loop, of the first stitch and half double crochet into it. Half double crochet into the back loops only or BLO half double crochet, back loops only half double crochet in each stitch all the way across. And by doing this, we will get this really nice ridged effect going, which looks a bit like a pumpkin. 
As you near the end of the row, don't miss that last stitch. Because we're using half double crochet with a turning chain of only one, sometimes that first half double crochet in the row is kind of pulled down a little bit, so don't miss it. If you're unsure, count them up. You should still have the same number of stitches in row two that you had in row one. In my case, that's 24. We've ended the row, we're gonna chain one, turn, and it's the same thing, BLO or back loops only half double crochet. Skip your turning chain, back loops only half double crochet in each stitch all the way across, that will keep that ridged look going. And you're gonna repeat this pattern of just half double crochet, back loops only, all the way across, chain one, turn, until your piece of fabric measures approximately 20 to 22 inches for a child when slightly stretched, not too much stretch, around 22 to 23 inches for an adult lady, and around 23 to 25 inches, or however you need it to be for a man or a larger head. So if you're making this sort of more custom sized, you wanna take your measuring tape and measure the circumference of your head or the head you're making it for by wrapping the measuring tape around your head over your ears so that it crosses the back of your head and over your forehead. That will give you the circumference measurement of your head, and that is how long you need to make this piece of fabric. I've made 37 rows of the back loops only half double crochet stitch, and when I measure it from one edge all the way to the other, I come up with 22 inches. So that'll be around 34 rows for a child, maybe 40 rows for a, an adult male or a larger hat, or however many rows you need to work in the back loops only half double crochet stitch in order to get the circumference measurement you need. So 34, 37, 40 rows, those are the target numbers, but whatever you need, the row count doesn't matter. And once your fabric meets that length, that sort of circumference measurement, we can seam the two edges together. There is no wrong or right side to your fabric. So once you've finished your last row, you're gonna chain one, grab the other short end, bring them together. We're gonna to slip stitch to seam up our little hat by using the back loops only of our last row and the corresponding foundation chain right across from it. So remember to skip your turning chain, find the back loop only of your first stitch, slip your hook through the corresponding foundation chain and slip stitch. You want the next back loop only, the next foundation chain. I'm gonna keep my little tail out of the way here and slip stitch. Next back loop only, next foundation chain, and slip stitch. Try to keep your slip stitches somewhat loose. You don't want them to be tight because you don't want to have a tight seam. And you can just slowly work your way down the length of the hat. Once we've seamed up our hat, you can decide whether you like the seam facing out or maybe you want to flip it inside out, whichever sort of side you like the best. I like that extra seam myself, it just looks like another ridge in the pumpkin. Um, flip it inside out, leave it right side out, however you want. We are going to use the orange for one more row as we close in the top. We're going to switch to the single crochet stitch now. Stitch count does not matter, so whether you skip a row or not, it doesn't matter. What we're gonna do is work a single crochet in the edge of every single row around. So remember, your rows were half double crochet, your single crochets are gonna be smaller than your rows are wide. I had 37 rows, so I'll probably have around 37 single crochets once I'm finished this little row, but it doesn't matter if you have too many, if you have too few. Basically what you're doing is looking to start cinching in the top of your hat. So fewer is better, but more than likely you'll end up with one per row edge. We are going to chain one and we're gonna single crochet into the edge of the next row. You can grab a couple of loops. Um, try not to split the stitch too much. So that was that row. Here's the next row edge. I'm just kind of grabbing the edge loops of the row. I'm single crocheting. Here's the next row. I'm gonna try and get a couple loops at the top of that one. And I wanna keep my tension 
not tight, but certainly a little tighter than I would be. If I was going to be loose, I don't want to be loose. So if you find your tension is a bit loose, you can switch to a smaller hook at this point, if you find that helps. And all you want to do is just single crochet in the end of each of your rows all the way around. So that's my next row. I'm going to put a single crochet here. Stitch count doesn't matter. Once you've finished working a single crochet into the edge of each row all the way around, you should find that your hat wants to kind of stand up and curve in a little bit. Again, stitch count doesn't matter. You should have roughly one single crochet per row edge, but if you've got more or less, it doesn't matter. What you're looking for is a sort of simple closing in of the top. We're going to join with a slip stitch to that first single crochet we made and fasten off. You can take a moment to weave in your tails, you can work over top of this one, doesn't matter, but you do want to grab your green because we're going to start into our stem. We're going to take our green or stem color now and put a slip knot on our hook. We're going to join our yarn with a slip stitch in the same place that we joined our last row and fastened off. And I'm going to work over top of both of my short tails here. So join with a slip stitch. And we are going to single crochet two stitches together all the way around. Now if you have an odd number of single crochet stitches, you'll end up with one extra stitch that you'll just single crochet into. So if it doesn't work out perfectly, don't worry. But we are just actively decreasing at this point. So we've joined with a single crochet, we're going to chain one. Chain one doesn't mean anything. We are just going to start a single crochet in the same stitch. And then we are going to start a single crochet in the next stitch. So that brings three loops up on our hook, yarn over and pull back through everything. And again, I'm working over top of my two short tails. Let's do the next two stitches. Start a single crochet in the next stitch start a, a single crochet in the stitch next to that. There's three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull back through everything. That is single crochet, two stitches together. You're going to do that all the way around. Once you've single crocheted two stitches together all the way around, you should notice the top of your hat is really starting to fold inwards. So we're going to probably do one or two more rows of single crochet two stitches together. We're not going to join the row with a slip stitch. We're just going to keep going. And again, stitch count doesn't really matter, but we want to get down to a stitch count that's somewhere around the 8, 9, 10, 11 stitches all the way around kind of mark. If you find it helpful, you can use a stitch marker to just sort of mark where the start and finish of your rows are. You don't even have to mark the actual stitch, just sort of mark the hat right where the row kind of starts and stops. And that way you know you're sort of roughly back at the beginning uh, as you count decreasing. So like I said, we want to aim for a row count. I should say a stitch count that's like 8, 9, 10, 11, somewhere in there. Not super important, but we're going to continue to single crochet two stitches together all the way around. So I'm going to go directly into the first two stitches of that first row of green and continue to single crochet two stitches together. So we didn't join the row. We're just sort of spiraling now, which is important because pumpkins spiral. They have spiraling tendrils. They kind of spin out from the source. Very circular. <laughs> so a little bit of spiraling here. At the end of my second row of single crochet two stitches together, I'm down to about 10 stitches all the way around. So that's it for me. I don't want to go any smaller. I'm going to take my stitch marker out. Again, I'm not joining the row. I'm just going to continue to single crochet around and around and around. So we are just using simple single crochet at this point. Single crochet in each stitch. Stitch count doesn't matter. Number of rows don't matter, you're just making a little stem at this point. Now 
I've single crocheted in each stitch all the way around and around and around for about four rows. So I've got four rows of just straight single crochet. Doesn't really matter, but you do want a stem that's at least an inch or two and a half centimeters tall. You can go taller if you want. And once you've got to that point, again, stitch count doesn't matter, row count doesn't matter, we're just going to single crochet the two sides together. So we're not even gonna bother to chain, we're just going to slip our hooks through the, so you sort of squeeze your stem together and grab the first two stitches and single crochet through them. And then grab the next set, single crochet through that, and the next set. Doesn't matter if you don't have an even number, just all the way across is fine. And then once I'm at the end, I just also like to slip stitch into the same place that I worked my last single crochet. I find that just kind of, I don't know, rounds the edge a little bit. Then we're going to snip our yarn, fasten off, and you can take a moment to weave in that tail. Now all of our little pumpkin hat needs is a tendril. So let's keep our green yarn. We'll get that going too. We're gonna to take our green yarn. We're gonna make a slip knot. Try to leave a little bit of tail, a couple inches or so, just enough to kind of tie a knot later. We're gonna chain 15. Try to make sure they're not too tight. And then we're going to start to create a spiral. So we're gonna skip the first chain from the hook. We're gonna single crochet four times into the next chain. And it doesn't matter if that chain gets really big. So four single crochet into that chain. Find the next chain, four single crochet into that chain. four single crochet into the next chain, and you're gonna repeat this all the way up. So four single crochet into every single chain. If you want an even thicker tendril, you can do five single crochet into every chain. And what's gonna happen is that it's going to eventually start to spiral. Once you've single crocheted four into every chain, it will want to spin. If not, just take a moment to spin it or unspin it. Um, depending on how you work, it might want to kind of go the other way or look a bit flat. Just turn it into a spin or a little spiral and it'll stay that way. You can snip your yarn. Fasten off. Grab your yarn needle. We're going to just pull our ends into the edge of the green part of our hat. So you can have this sort of hang down anywhere. I'm going to just poke my needle through a spot, maybe right down at the edge here, right where the green starts. I'll pull one tail in, sort of in one place, and then I'm going to grab the other tail and pull it down just beside it. So I'm going to hop over one stitch, just so I'm not pulling both ends through the same space, making sure that I'm pulling them into the inside of the hat. Go in, oh, there we go. Ha! So that it sits at the edge of my hat. Flip the thing on the inside, and you can see, this is, looks a little better, both of my tails have come to the inside of my hat. I've got a little bit of the actual tendril pulled through there. Let's loosen that up a bit. There we go. And they're on either side of a stitch. So all I'm gonna do is knot the ends together. Not too tight, not too loose. Do it at least twice. And then I'm gonna weave those tails in so that I know that that tendril is not gonna come undone and it's not gonna fall off of my hat. And make sure all of your little tails are woven in. Don't forget there might be a little one down here at the bottom. 
And once you know your tendril isn't going anywhere, your hat is all ready to wear. So, not too difficult, was it? And don't you love it when you really don't have to pay attention to stitch counts and the weirder it looks, the better it looks because it's an organic shape? I like that. I also find this very, very cozy. I think I will be wearing it out on my next autumn stroll. <laughs> I guarantee you will get smiles and even some people asking you where you got your adorable hat. Um, I hope you enjoyed making this as much as I did. <laughs> and we will see you soon here on the Jada and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a pumpkin-y week. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Hi, everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.